Hi, it's Martha. I wish we could see each other. I miss you in the library. But since we can't, I thought I would take this opportunity to tell you about some new favorite books. Not new, but favorite books of mine. So the first one is Stretchy McHandsome. And Stretchy McHandsome is by Judy Shackner. And it's about a wonderful butterscotch cat who loves to stretch and curl himself into all different shapes and all different configurations. And he lives in a box with his eight brothers and sisters. And the story starts out like this. The McHandsome clan was lively and large. They lived in a box with no one in charge. But Stretchy is a little tired of being in such a big mob of other cats, and he wants to set off on his own and have some adventures. So he does. He goes out to see a little bit of the world, and in his travels, he meets a little girl who kind of looks like him, the same butterscotch hair, and she also loves to stretch and twist and dance and they form an instant connection. And look at the fun that they can have together. So Stretchy goes home with Beanie McBright and they have a nice family together after that. And the next book is Noodlefunt. Noodlefunt by Jacob Kramer is about an elephant who is crazy about noodles and pasta. And she loves any kind of pasta, every shape and size. And she's a famous cook. She's famous for her pasta parties that she gives to all her friends. And here's one of her pasta parties with all her friends eating all different noodle dishes that Noodlefunt has made. But the bossy kangaroos who live in their community have decided that only kangaroos can eat pasta from now on, no other animals. And of course, that's not fair at all. And so Noodlefunt and her friends have to kind of rise up and get their rights back from the kangaroos. And among other things, Noodlefunt um, invents a, a machine, a fantastic machine, where anything she puts in it comes out the other side as pasta. So she puts crayons or sticks or rocks, it doesn't matter what, but the machine turns it into noodles. It's very fun, Noodlefunt, Noodlefunt. Okay, then we have Carson Crosses Canada. This is the story of a wonderful road trip taken by Carson the dog and his friend Annie. And they live on the west coast of Canada in British Columbia. But Annie's sister lives on the east coast of Canada at Prince Edward Island. And Annie's sister needs her. So she decides that they are gonna drive all the way across the huge country of Canada on a road trip and go see her sister. And along the way, Carson the dog has lots of adventures and discovers lots of fun things. Let's see. Oh, Canada is so beautiful. Here's a beautiful place that they come to and then look, there's Carson on a camping trip. So Carson crosses Canada, and it has quite a few sites uh, along the way, uh, real sites of Canada. So it's kind of interesting to find out what, what Canada has to offer if you drive across it, a small amount. Okay, this one is one of my old favorites. It's called I'm in Charge of Celebrations, and it's by Bird Baylor, and these wonderful pictures are by Peter Parnow. And this is about a girl who lives in the desert and she makes up her own holidays and her own celebrations, not just the regular holidays that you celebrate at school or with your family, but holidays that she makes up for days that are important to her. And she keeps a notebook and she writes down all about the celebration and the holiday. She writes the date and everything about the date so that she can remember for the rest of her life 
how special that day was. And it would be things like the day she saw a triple rainbow, or the day she met a coyote on the trail, or dust devil day. Those are all things that happened to her in the desert that she feels were so special that she wants to remember them. This one is triple rainbow day or rainbow celebration day. So you can see the artwork is really special. And also this, the text, the story is like poetry. It's beautiful. And I think it's a nice idea to make up your own celebration for a very special day when something happened that just was so memorable and made your heart beat and you wanted to write it down and remember it forever. So that one is called I'm in charge of celebrations. And then I know those of you who visit me at the children's desk in the library know that I am crazy about ospreys. And in fact, here behind me is a picture of Richie and Rosie, the ospreys that we watch on the live camera when we're sitting at the children's desk. Well, this is an incredible book that's written like a story, but it's actually the true story. It's science. It's a true story of a real Osprey back east. Her name is Belle, and this book is called Belle's Journey, An Osprey Takes Flight. And it's quite fantastic. So it starts, you know, at the beginning, with the ne eggs in the nest and the eggs hatch and so forth. And then here are the baby ospreys and they're just experimenting, taking their first little flights, flapping their wings and lifting off the nest. And that's exactly what's happening this week on the Richmond camera, that the nestlings are starting to practice flying. But so um, in this book, Belle, uh, becomes uh, big enough to fly and she takes her very first migration and that's when uh, the baby birds who are now as big as grown-ups even though they're only a couple of months old they leave the nest and they go to their winter migration and Belle flies 4,000 miles from the coast of Massachusetts all the way down to South America, Brazil. And so it's the real story of uh, all the dangers that she meets along the way and her successful flight down there. And here's a picture of the real Belle. Here's Belle the Osprey from Massachusetts. And it's quite a long story. I, you know, I really recommend this for any age level. It has a lot of science in it and also a lot of adventure. I think you'll like it. All right, let's move on to some novels. Cat Wolf Investigates is about Cat and her mother. Her mother is a veterinarian, takes care of animals, and they both are crazy about animals. And doesn't Cat have the perfect name, Cat Wolf? They've moved to a new village and a new home. They've moved to a quiet seaside village in England and her mother has a vet office there and Kat opens her own pet sitting agency and so she's going to take care of other people's pets when they're away on trips and things. And right away she gets involved in a mystery because she's taking care of a talking parrot and his, her owner disappears. So this is a mystery, not only about the disappeared owner, but it's actually, she actually gets involved in an international mystery with spies and everything. So Cat Wolf Investigates is full of animal loving facts, things about taking care of animals, but also an exciting mystery and a story of new friendships. Cat has just moved to a new town, has met new people. So Cat Wolf Investigates by Lauren St. John. I liked it. All right, this one was hilarious. It was hilarious. This is Science Fair by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. And this is about a middle school science fair. It doesn't sound all that exciting, but oh my gosh, it has international, um, 
terrorists involved and a plot to destroy the United States and of course a very nervous frog. So very, very funny and um, an exciting mystery. Again, an, another exciting mystery. And can, can Toby discover the international terrorists before the United States is destroyed? That is kind of the suspenseful part of the book. Science Fair by Dave Barry. And then finally, I know some of you have heard me talk about the books about Bowser and Birdie, and this is book one, Woof, by Spencer Quinn. And Bowser is a dog, and Birdie is a girl. She's 11 years old, and they live in Louisiana along the water in the area, the, the areas that are called the bayou in Louisiana. And this is a mystery also. Um, Birdie and Bowser are going to solve it together. And what's so funny and fun about these books is that Bowser tells the story. So it's all kind of in dog thought. Like he's not really very sure of what's going on. Um, he's a little bit goofy and sort of distracted, easily distracted. So right when something important is happening, maybe he starts scratching a flea or something like a dog might do, but he's fiercely loyal to Birdie. And so he is going to help her solve the mystery. And of course, he's going to protect her no matter what. So those are some books that I've liked lately. And I hope that you might like them too. And I hope that I see you soon in the library. Okay, take care.